This video presentation is about the mechanical advantage of a wheel and axle system, pulleys, and an introduction to compound machines. So here in front of us we have a wheel and axle. So what is this wheel and axle going on here? Well, when the wheel turns, why does it turn? Because the axle is turning it. Or is it the other way around? Is the axle turning because the wheel has been turned? This is one of the things we're going to have to be paid, paying close attention to. What's the effort force? and what's the resistance force. So a wheel is basically just a lever. All right, if we take one little piece of that wheel and look at it, we have another lever with the center of the axle being the fulcrum. Here's our resistance force uh, for the hub of the axle. And then here is our effort force for the outside of the wheel. Or maybe those two are reversed. So looking at it like this, if that's the resistance and that's the effort, kind of reminds you of a second class lever. Uh, there's lots of examples. Wheel, uh, a wheel driving an axle. For example, steering wheels, knobs, valves, right? So let's start with the IMA, the ideal mechanical advantage. So the ideal mechanical advantage, of course, is the distance of the effort divided by the distance of the resistance. Both of these forces are going to travel in a circular pattern when we're talking about wheels and axles. Now, of course, we know that the circumference is 2 pi r, or pi times d. Thinking about it traveling around in the, around, all the way around the circumference, the distance of the effort is pi times the diameter of the effort, whether it's the wheel or the axle. And the resistance, same thing, pi times the diameter of the resistance, which is the wheel or the axle, you know, in either case. So when we divide, we see we have the pi of the effort diameter divided by pi of the resistance diameter. Well, the pi's are going to cancel, right? So we're still left with the effort diameter divided by the resistance diameter. Pretty straightforward. So what is the IMA of the wheel above if the axle is driving the wheel? Pause the video and calculate. So if the axle is driving the wheel, that makes the axle the effort and the wheel the resistance. So we need to divide 6 inches by 20 inches. 6 inches for the diameter of the axle divided by 20 inches for the diameter of the wheel, being the resistance diameter. We do the calculation. So 6 inches divided by 20 is 0.3. So we have a 0.3 to 1, or if we multiply both sides times 10, a 3 to 10 ratio. That means that we're going to have to turn for every three, let's say, meters of circumference that we turn this wheel, this axle, we're going to get 10 meters out of this wheel. Well, what if it was the other way around? What if the wheel is the one driving the axle? Pause the video and calculate what the IMA would be for that. This time you should have divided 20 inches into 6 inches. So 20 divided by 6, 3.33, or a 3.33 to 1 ratio. Let's look at this example a little bit more. So let's go ahead and bring forces in to this problem. The AMA, the actual mechanical advantage, is the resistance force divided by the effort force. Well, what if the, the 70 pounds here, what if that was the effort, and these 200 pounds here, that was the resistance? So applying 70 pounds here can get 200 pounds here, just like a second class lever. So go ahead and calculate that. Find out what is the actual mechanical advantage by pausing the video and solving. All right, so we can see that we have a really good mechanical advantage here. I mean, we're getting 200 pounds of force out and only putting 70 pounds in. So let's go ahead and do the division. 200 pounds divided by 70, 2.86 or 2.86 to 1. So it's more than doubling the amount of force that we're putting in. But of course, that means we're more than doubling the distance we're going to travel. So what's the efficiency of this wheel assembly based on the IMA, the ideal mechanical advantage you solved for earlier? Pause the video and calculate the efficiency. As you remember, efficiency is the percent of the AMA divided by the IMA. So the AMA the actual mechanical advantage divided by the ideal mechanical advantage and multiply the whole thing times 100. That's 2.86 
divided by 3.33 times 100, and you should have got 85.9%. That's pretty darn good. All right, congratulate yourself. So let's take a look at pulleys. Pulleys are basically wheels that have been arranged so that you can run a string or a cable over them. All right, some sort of rope or cable. So let's take a look first at the fixed pulley. Here on the right, we have a fixed pulley with an IMA of one. If you apply 10 pounds of resistance, it's gonna take 10 pounds of force to pull that resistance up. And ideally, the tension in this string is, or cable is gonna be the same everywhere. So if it's 10 pounds here, it's here, 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 here. Ideally, it's 10 pounds everywhere. Well, what about a movable pulley? Here we have five pounds of force and another five pounds of force. So in total, you're applying 10 pounds of force upward, and there's 10 pounds of force downward. So this is equilibrium here. There's no um, acceleration going on, and you could pull up with five pounds of tension here. You can have an additional five pounds of tension here, and that's more than enough to lift this 10 pound force, ideally. All right, that's an ideal mechanical advantage. So we have an ideal mechanical advantage here of two. Distance-wise, this rope here, you're going to have to pull in twice as much of it to lift this weight up. In other words, if you want this weight, this 10-pound weight, to move up one meter, you need to pull this rope or cable two meters, twice as far. Two meters divided by one meter, you get an IMA of two. So how about in combination? We have a 600-pound motorcycle here, and we want to lift it up. So we put a combination of pulleys together. This combination is often referred to as a block and tackle. And you can get a very large mechanical advantage of the, out of this. The more strings that you double up, the bigger the mechanical advantage. So if a single rope or cable is threaded through multiple times through the system of pulleys, the IMA is going to be equal to the number of strands opposing the force of the load and the movable pulleys. So look at the right there. What do you think? How many strings are opposing the force of the load and the movable pulleys? If you said four, you did very good. So here they are. One, two, three, four. The string out here, it's not opposing the force of the load and the movable pulleys. It does have tension. If you are pulling on this string right here, pull, 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 it's going to have the same tension, basically, ideally, as all the rest of these ropes, if these pulleys are ideal also. So do you think you could lift this up? Well, you'd have to be able to pull 150 pounds. If you weigh less than 150 pounds, even if you hung on this rope, you wouldn't be able to pick up that motorcycle. But maybe you could get a friend to help, too. How about compound machines? What happens if we have more than one machine? In this picture here, we have a lever. It's got a resistance force and the resistance distance of four feet. And about 12 feet away, we have an effort force. But the effort force isn't pulling up directly. It's got a movable pulley. Huh, this gets complicated. Well, the ideal mechanical advantage of a compound machine like this is going to be the ideal mechanical advantage of the pulley times the ideal mechanical advantage of the lever. So if we look at this, we have two strands, and then we've got to multiply that times the effort distance divided by the resistance distance for this lever system. So that's 2 times 12 feet divided by 4 feet, or 2 times 3, or 6. So we have a 6 to 1 mechanical advantage. Not too shabby. All right, so let's go ahead and look at pulleys in combination. That's the main reason why we wanted to introduce compound machines at this point. So here we have three separate pulleys, three separate movable pulleys. Each one of these pulleys is supported by two strands. One strand is connected to the beam above, that's the strand on the left, and each one strand on the right is connected to another movable pulley. How would we calculate the IMA of this system. I think you could figure it out. Pause the video and think about it. Did you think about it? Well, 
What if we multiply the IMA of all of these? This has two strands, this has two strands, and this one has two strands. We have three different machines. So the total IMA, and, uh, the total ideal mechanical advantage is going to be the ideal mechanical advantage of each one of the pulley systems multiplied together. Well, we know that that's two. So if this is 80 pounds, it has to have a 40 pound and a 40 pound holding it up. And if this resistance here is 40 pounds, well then this must be 20 and 20, right? And if this force here is 20 pounds, is a 20 pound tension here, then this must be 10 and 10 to e be equal and opposite of that 20 pounds. Again, an ideal mechanical advantage of two, multiply two times two times two, and you get eight. So this system has an ideal mechanical advantage of eight. Excellent. So here's a pulley system. What is the AMA of this pulley system based on the two forces we see here? Pause the video and solve. Well, AMA is the resistance force divided by the effort force. The resistance force is 800 pounds. The effort force is 230 pounds. That gives us a 800 divided by 230. Of course, the pounds cancel, and we end up with 3.48 to 1 ratio. What about the efficiency? We can count the strands to figure the ideal mechanical advantage. So with that and the actual mechanical advantage, you should be able to solve for the efficiency. The efficiency for this is, of course, the AMA divided by the IMA, the actual mechanical advantage divided by the ideal mechanical advantage times 100. 3.48 divided by 4 times 100, 87%. Very good. So let's talk about a few misconceptions. One, angles don't matter that this system here on the left and this system here on the right, they're the same thing. Doesn't really matter. It's not true. All right. For pulley ideal mechanical advantage, the number of strings or strands opposing the load only if the strands are opposite and parallel to the resistance force. So in the previous example, what about that? Well, the fact that this one is at an angle like this actually would change the, uh, the mechanical advantage of this system. It probably would be more like 3.9 instead of 4. So this one is easily solved with just addition. This one, we need trigonometry. We need to look at the sines and the cosines to figure out, because this force here needs to be broken up into its x and y components. So we're not going to be doing that at this time. So another common misconception just count the effort strands and it, if it pulls up. What if you're pulling downward? Does that not work anymore? Okay, the pulley IMA equals the number of strands opposing the load. So you count a strand if it opposes the load or the load's movable pulley. It could be up, could be down. All right, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you learned more about the mechanical advantage, both ideal and actual for wheels and axles, pulleys, and compound machines.